Alma and it's time for my May wrap up. I read nine books in May which is kind of a consistent total for me at the moment. Three of those were audiobooks which I have discussed in a different video. Uh, today I'm going to focus on the remaining six. It didn't feel like a great quality reading month for me but most of these came in around the three stars so it was steady. The first book I want to talk about I don't actually have with me um, and it is Lillian's Story by Kate Grenville. Kate Grenville is an Australian writer who I believe has had quite an illustrious career. This book is from early on in her career in the 1980s and it was chosen for my real life book club um, by one of my friends and I, I don't know where she gets her ideas from because this was an old book which isn't particularly well publicised. It uh, focuses on a... Um, it, well, it's inspired by a true character of a bag lady from the streets of Sydney and there's a film of it as well I think featuring Tony Collette. I have nothing of note to say about it really to be honest I include it here for posterity only um, so, and I wouldn't recommend it so I'm, I don't even know why I mentioned it. Let's move on to the ones I've actually got here. So the first one I read and it feels like a long time ago now the beginning of May is Apple Tree Yard by Louise Doughty or Doughty. Now this was a very popular series on BBC One earlier this year which I didn't manage to watch. Uh, it was the talk of my staff room at work and um, just to give you a clue I sit in um, the A-level humanities staff room at work so most of my colleagues are slightly more mature, um, well read, educated and it's unlike them to talk about TV um, but this is a popular choice I think because that main character is slightly older here it was uh, it's kind of a classy thriller I think I enjoyed this book um, I particularly enjoyed that the main character was a mature woman uh, I think you know in literature in art like life it can feel sometimes that as a woman gets older she begins to sort of disappear from the public eye and we had a main character here who wasn't perfect um, you know who had her flaws but wasn't interested rounded older female character who embarks on a passionate affair which takes a turn uh, for the dark as they both become embroiled in a crime. Uh, the book starts with the trial for the crime and then the rest of the story is told in flashback. It was gripping, it was interesting, um, it started to drag a little bit towards the end for me in terms of the courtroom and the although the ending was underwhelming I felt it was kind of uh, fitting and fulfilling overall. So if you like thrillers and you haven't read this uh, then I would read it unless you've seen the TV series I think the problem with thrillers is once you know the gig you know the gig and I'm not sure you ever really enjoy it on the same level again but I hadn't seen the TV series so I enjoyed this one I gave it three stars the next book was Victoria from Eve's Alexandria's Pick for the Classic Children's Book Club and it was Eni Blyton's Mallory Towers. Now I thought this would be kind of a light chewing gum read for me this May but because it's a bind up of three books it actually took me bloody ages to read uh, but I did enjoy it. I read these books as, child, as a child, Eni Blyton was my favourite author uh, but I'd forgotten all about them. I did like a lot of the school series of Eni Blyton, I also read Twins at St Clair's um, but my favourite was the Naughtiest Girl at School trilogy, which people don't talk about quite so much. And I remember another series set at a Cornish girls' school called Trelawney, something like that. I don't think it was Enid Blyton. But, you know, the, these stories are ripe with conventions of boarding school life, midnight feasts, lacrosse matches, um, friendships being made and broken. And it was a lovely trip down memory lane. In fact, as I read the opening chapters, it came back to me really vividly, the characters and the stories that I hadn't thought about for probably nearly 30 years. So it, I, it was a, a really warm, nostalgic experience. Experience. What struck me is the differences between uh, girls' lives at this time and the modern day. Now I know it's not as simple as a chronological gap, there's a lot more going on here. I mean I'm sure there's still boarding schools perhaps like this in Britain but it's not something that uh, my family or people I know have ever been touched by. Um, but girls at this time seem to have a very different life to, than girls now. Uh, so friendship was still very much high on the agenda, the making and the breaking. And the girls seem to have one very special friend. You could only seem to have one friend here, um, like your special partner. But I guess in the absence of boys, it was kind of like a quasi-romantic setup, which escaped me when I read it the first time round, but seemed quite obvious on a rereading. I was also uh, interested to see how little the girls seemed to think about their 
appearance. You know, in an Instagram filter ready world, even our youngest girls are concerned with looking or appearing a certain way. There was one character in the, one of the later books who's an American girl who is concerned about the way she looked, and much was made of that. She was ridiculed by the other characters. Um, so it was quite refreshing in a way to see this different side of childhood with these girls who, uh, who just weren't remotely concerned about makeup or boys or any of those things. It's dated you know it, it, it's very much of its time but a great trip down memory lane this one and I think I gave this three stars too. The next book was The Dark Circle by Linda Grant. Uh, this is currently shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize. I don't believe the winner's been announced just yet. Um, I would be surprised if this won which isn't to say I didn't enjoy it. I really did enjoy it. It was possibly my favourite book of the month. I've seen mixed reviews of this book over Booktube and whilst I can understand why, a lot of what causes people to criticise this is why I loved it. So I'm absolutely crazy about the kind of mid-century period in uh, Great Britain, particularly probably the 50s, 60s, 70s are my decades of choice. This book is set in 1950s, so slightly at the earlier end of the period I'm interested in and it is about twins, um, who Jewish twins who are living in London, a boy and a girl, who get, uh, who are diagnosed with tuberculosis and get sent off to a sanatorium in Leafy Kent, uh, which is newly taken in NHS patients. The period detail here is just great. Um, I love reading about the day-to-day -day lives of people in times gone past uh, and this book felt a little bit like having a time machine and um, it is all about the detail it's a very slow and measured book um, so not a great deal happens now we've got in the sanatorium characters from all walks of life the nobility those who had no royalty who have been there for many many years privately funded patients and the new wave of sort of the, the twins from London and the, the bus drivers uh, who make up the, the newer NHS patients and you know in that kind of setting you would expect opportunity for a lot of tension but there wasn't really tension and I think that's why some people didn't enjoy it but for me that lack of obvious tension was just reflective of the lethargy that you know affected these characters who were recuperating from tuberculosis they were just too knackered and ill to fight and I, I, I just didn't mind that it just felt like a slice of life at a really fascinating time so it's five years post the war uh, the face of Britain is changing and these people who are almost locked away from modern life um, are looking at it through a window and yeah I just thought it was really really good there is a shift from the last sort of hundred pages where we go from the sanatorium to um, a break in Spain which kind of jarred a little bit I wasn't sure how successful that part was but the characters here um, are, are just fascinating and, and very detailed a range of characters you kind of jump from one person's head into the other in that omniscient uh, narrative style which I really enjoy um, yeah and you know if you like it you're not averse to a quieter book that is a snapshot of a certain time and place uh, then I would go for this and you know I gave this four stars I thought it was great the next book was perhaps slightly less successful um, for me. This is The Tobacconist by Robert Thiethaler. Um, it's a book set in Austria. I'm not sure, it might be translated from the Austrian, actually. Uh, yes, it was translated from the Austrian. This is a book that when I was in Waterstones uh, last month, they had it on display. I think it was like their book of the week. I don't know if that was just in Birmingham or a national thing, but one of the members of staff in Waterstones said, oh, you should buy that. It's, you know, really good, really good book. Um, and I've mentioned before that if anybody just talks to me in a shop, then, you know, I'll buy whatever they're selling. <laughs> I'm so easy. So I went, oh, okay. And I bought it despite not knowing what it's about. This is, again, a little slice of life book. It is set in, um, in Vienna during the Second World War. It focuses, it's a coming of age novel really, it focuses on a young lad called Franz who moves from rural Austria um, after his situation changes to uh, become a, an apprentice tobacconist um, at a family friend's shop. Now the guy who runs the um, tobacconist shop is a veteran of the First World War and is, has quite strong opinions um, about um, against the, the current 
authority in Austria and what's happening in Germany. Uh, he's not a fan of Hitler. He continues to welcome Jewish customers into his shop long after it seems to become socially acceptable um, and there are consequences to those actions. We have a character of Sigmund Freud in here who's living in Vienna who strikes up an unlikely friendship with Franz. That felt a little gimmicky to me. I'm not sure that was necessary but Franz has a really interesting romance with a young bohemian girl um, who by night works as an adult dancer uh, and seeing him kind of fall desperately in love and fall out of love was kind of amusing against the backdrop of, of some really of some atrocities here um, so it has a kind of dry self-aware wit to it which I did enjoy um, and it was a real nice kind of slice of life of Vienna at this time if you like stories set in the second world war then I think you would definitely enjoy this uh, but it is sad and um, you know it, it's not without its tragedy I, I said it wasn't successful but as I talk about it I think I possibly enjoyed it more than I thought I'm not sure to what extent it will stay with me it felt a little bit like a made for tv movie that you might watch on a Thursday afternoon on a rainy day with a cup of tea if that's not too specific uh, rather than a big blockbuster but you know it's a quiet book but if, if you do like those kind of historical wartime novels um, then yeah I would read this one I would recommend it to you finally one that was very popular on booktube last year it's Eileen by Atesha Moshfeg that's a fantastic name I just like saying it Atesha Moshfeg great okay so Eileen um, is a, a character study really of a young woman uh, living in the um, United States in the 60s who works in a boys prison she's a very lonely isolated character she lives with her father who is a drunk her, her mother is recently deceased and she's a bit of a strange fish um, she strikes up a bit of an obsession with a woman who comes to work at the prison and their relationship is wholly unhealthy and takes a dark turn as she gets caught up with a very unusual crime so lots of people have described this book as you know kind of unpleasant and cringy and it's all those things but I didn't think Eileen was all bad I thought she was a very interesting character I think it's easy when you write or read on savory characters that they sometimes fall into sort of cookie cutter stereotype psychopath uh, molds but I never felt that with Eileen you know the detail that's given to it here her thoughts her processes her kind of her obsessions um, her little daily routines um, I loved loved seeing inside of her head and although it was very very slow and quite repetitive in parts the crime that's revealed in the last 50 pages made me kind of take a breath and um, it was a real real fantastic ending so quite often I think I start a book with enthusiasm and the trail off for me this was the other way around it was a slow burn but then really ramped up towards the end and uh, yeah a really good read I think I gave this three stars but maybe slightly more than that on reflection edging towards the four so that was it those are all the books I read in May um, in terms of my June reading I'm hoping to have uh, a no buy June so I've talked before about my limited TBR I am going to stick to books on my shelf I'm marking the uh, GCSE English exams over June or July so I expect that my reading will be reduced but I'm only seven books off my annual Goodreads target of 50 books woo I did say it pretty small so it would be really nice if I could beat that and then try and double it in the second half of the year I'll see how I go thanks as always for watching your thoughts and comments appreciated underneath and I'll see you next time bye